and welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Brick Simulator gets an HD remake, and I'm only half joking about that in Black Mesa. Let's get another update. It's not about Zen, so I don't really care. Stardew Valley has some new special sauce. Do you want to try their mayo? And Steam Input tries to go pro. They got to get through Flibit first. There's a wipeout style racing game coming. Would it be too much to ask if it doesn't suck? And the GPP is dead. Long live scummy GPU company practices. I'm Vince Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel under the Linux as I do every single week. Joined by the now powerful man up north. He's not Santa Claus. Nay, he's Toronto's own Jordan Svang. You know him. He's there. Look at him. Hello. That is so I'm, terrifying. I'm here. And I'm, I'm in this room right now. Hey, hey, hey. Britannia, Space Britannia checking in. That that dulcet tone of Hello. confusion. Yes, he, his confusion <laughs> actually makes a sound. That's one Pedro Mateus. Joining us together with a chat room dynamic. Keeping it real, keeping us semi-honest in um, doing that nightmare feel. But helping us form the most important part of this horse and buggy show. Known as Cocaine Voltron. I'm going to have to say, Jordan, you have the best... Uh, what we've been up to this week. Actually, you have the most I, I, expensive what we've been up to yes. this week. <laughs> the, in, in more ways than <laughs> one. Number one, we had a fucking windstorm in Toronto yesterday. <laughs> and it trashed my air conditioner by launching it from my window onto the floor. Just completely smashing it. I I thought I was pretty secure in there, but I guess I was intending people to push out against it, not in against it. I also, I also, I also pulled the trigger on the 1080 Ti. I'm, I'm looking at you in like double 4K vision right now. I finally got that set up. But uh, you're welcome because now next week they're going to announce the 1180 Ti for half the price and double the performance. Yay! So. I'm looking forward to that. What's up, Pedro? Well, over here, I'm burning Solus now. Uh, last week I got the uh, the M.2, and so on Sunday I decided, you know what? Let's go ham. Let's uh let's put Ike's little teeny tiny distro to the test. I've already run into a couple of teeny tiny niggly issues. They're really teeny tiny, but uh, yeah, I just I hit Ike up on the hangouts like, "Yo, this is an issue." He's like, "Yep, fixed it. Pretty mm. good. It's pretty good." It's it's t- tell me something, Pitcher. It's weird, right? That you can just <laughs> go to people now. Like, I can. I have a problem with Solus. I got a problem with the Nvidia drivers. I can go to Aaron. I got a problem with like yeah. FNA games. I can go to Ethan. It's just like, <laughs> hey man, you mind taking a look at it for like five minutes? It's it's, it's, it's such like, a weird oh, position. Oh yeah, I figured it out. Solved it. And for the low awesome. low price of um, five years of Saturday nights, you too can um <laughs> get that. I don't have a whole lot uh, to report. Uh, I had charter a bunch of charter critters crawling around my house practically infested looking at an issue with their connection it wasn't getting maximum speed and what we're paying for this to bring this distortion to you it's like send me some people and they sent all the people like bucket trucks and uh, a couple of critters i listen to the pre-pre shows and you can find out what what i said to one and it was very uh walter white ish but i said stuff to them but every week we do need to say something to the horse yeah, I mean, shit. I had I had something, but I lost my train of thought. It's the steam. Too soon. I didn't have the thing set up. Do it again. Ah, steam. Linux. Update. Off to a great start, ladies Jesus. and gentlemen. All right. All right fine. <laughs> it, it's it's happening ron paul budget all right switch pro controller support via steam input we covered a story uh last week about some guy who created a user space driver for the steam pro controller over the usb and not quite over the bluetooth just yet and then steam's like yo dog we got we got you covered and now um the steam pro or the switch pro controller is uh supported via steam input if you go into big picture mode and do the setup thing it'll recognize it they have a couple options too because I don't actually shit. I don't have my switch controller. I can use those like a visual aid, but the the, the short version There's is that the a, the a, yeah the the A and the the A and the B button are switched, which mm-hmm. fucks up a bunch of people. It fucked me up while I was playing Axiom Verge on on my switch because um, I kept hitting A, but like A is cancel in Verge because it's mm-hmm. B in the Xbox controller layout. 
And after playing a bunch of Switch games, it's like, ah, oh, gotta. It, it, it's awkward. And Flipit had some uh, Flipit had some issues about that as well, yeah. including Steam input about how it just kind of hijacks everything and fucks with things. But he was a little concerned about it being uh, the the mode to switch the X and uh, B buttons being a global layout thing. He said it should be a per game layout thing, which I agree with. But yeah, yeah, there, there's there's a whole rant about that. Pedro, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, a little bit because you know. To what Flip had said, it's uh, just assuming that people want a certain layout isn't ideal. You know, I've already showed the 8-bit do here, and even though this button at the bottom here is labeled as B, and this one is A, and this one is Y, and this one is X, I don't use it like that. I just have it set like a regular Xbox Steam controller. Wait a minute, Pedro, Pedro, where... are you trying to imply that you're a PC gamer and you can set them however the fuck you want? Yes, okay. but a lot of people don't really know that. Even though they're PC gamers, they tend to just stick with the default. And if Steam defaults to the Nintendo layout, it's going to cause issues and it's going to cause a lot of people to say that it's broken, even though it actually isn't. And you can change it. It's just not a whole lot of people know about it. But yeah, it's uh, it's great to see the... Like the um, the Switch Pro controller being supported by Steam input. That's great. That's uh, awesome to see. It's good to see Valve is actually doing something, even if they're not releasing any games or, you know, curating their own store. But it is, uh, yeah, just defaulting to the non-standard layout because that's how the controller is etched on the buttons. Mm -hmm. eh, no, no, don't do that. Yeah, I don't know. Listen, if a lot of people get upset with it in a week or two, um, Steam, Steam will make a change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Barring that, they won't do a damn thing, and you know it. Uh, old school shooters, let's get into some updates for the Steamy Hotness. Yes. So uh, we talked about Apocryph a while back, and, well, it's out now. Uh, since uh, April 27th, it's come out to... Neutral reviews. Uh, I did send the developers an email. It's like, yo, can we get some keys for that? And they sent us keys. Uh, one of the keys was a duplicate, but they, uh, after I pointed that out to them, it was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, there you go. So we got keys. So chances are we'll be throwing chairs. Hey, at man, at I, some I, point. I, told, I told you when you said that, you should have been like, wait a minute, you fell for that? Uh, okay, send us another one then. <laughs> <laughs> There's like eight more keys. <laughs> By, by the way, ignore our G2A uh, email address. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's an old school style shooter type of thing. I really want this to be like Strafe is to Quake. I want this to be the Strafe of Exxon. Uh, something like that. I really want that. But uh, Ven, you tried it. You had some issues. Yeah, I would have tried it a lot sooner, but you're 100% right on that first key being a duplicate because I had a few minutes and it's like, boom, duplicate. It's like, God, I don't have time for this bullshit. I tried it a bit later and I'm going to say, if, you, if you're really trying to do something hexen like that looks all right. Uh, it probably shouldn't run like poo on a Ryzen 7 with a 980 like this does. I mean, oh. uh, we're talking 1080 too, low ball resolution, struggling to hit 50 struggling and it, it, it's, it's just like in the good old days when you had the build engine and like your computer couldn't run the freaking game no man i it's, listen it's it's, I, it's 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 retro man it's retro it's I wanna, intended 100 as I, I wanted to go in the options like does this thing have an option for like to enable uh dx and sx for my i i386 i don't know what the fuck was going on and uh, i turned the graphic fidelity down i mean it's not a bad looking game but didn't really help. I wasn't tapping 60 on this well, at any yeah. point. Well, the, the, the other thing too is this isn't this isn't the first like old school style game that kind of runs like ass that we'll be talking about nope. uh, this week. <laughs> no. <laughs> but more, more, more on that a little later, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just the one thing. It's uh, the minimum requirements for this game. They list uh, GTX 9800 GT, something like that. I, I don't think you tested it. With that lower graphics card, at least not on Linux. So, uh, same. 
Uh, stay stay tuned for that, man. But it is currently 1995. What stinky cash is? Yeah. But if you're looking for something maybe more in your price range for the low low price of free, that's right. Battle of West North. It's the thing we've talked about it, and it's currently available on Steam, which is good to see open source projects making their way to Valve because I'm sure that pisses off all I, I, kinds of. Go ahead, go ahead. I, I, oh, I, th- I think this is game number two that's open source. Probably. Oh yeah, that was the uh, shootery Quake Three engine based War, 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 Warsaw, 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 Warsaw. The dead Warsaw, game, yes. Okay, War, War, Warsaw. Yeah. Okay, yes, the dead game's also on Steam. Uh, yes. If you don't know what it is, never heard of it. It is an open source. Hey man, I like that you say it right there. A turn-based strategy. So I don't like it personally, but I'm just glad it's here. Uh, multiplayer maps, all that. And the main reason I like seeing this. Uh, it was very simple because it's a good way to keep games updated. It's one of the reasons mm-hmm. I don't use, like, I really wish GOG would get their good old shit together and release the Galaxy client. Because once I was like, I, you see the Steam, like, wait a minute, it just auto updates and it tells me if updates are available and I don't have to have a games folder with different versions that might be mismatched if I want to play multiplayer with other people. It's like, fuck all this no, is also, great. Also the whole multiplayer thing too. Exactly. Uh, Integrated. Yeah. Exact. Correct. Amundo. Now what I'd like to see, uh, you, you had some things, Jordan, with uh, how we could get more open source games on the Steams. Yeah, just because like normally you can go to their website, right? But Steam is a storefront, so introduce like a pay what you want mechanic for open source games because it, you know, if you can buy it on Steam, give them give them like five bucks or whatever. Hey, you get continued, you get continual patch support, you get the multiplayer shit, and you're helping out an open source project because Wesnoth has been around for fucking ever. Like, mm-hmm. yep. When you if if you were if you're an OG Linux gamer, this was like one of the few games that you actually had to play that was like in a functional state for a good number of years and they could definitely use some financial support that they, they, they've been a stalwart mainstay so yeah yeah it would, it would be yeah. nice if steam enabled that i think uh, in this magic moon dreamland i'd like to live in if valve would do just one of those random acts of not being an asshat and let established open source projects especially games uh on Steam for gratis, you know, no charge. It's like here. Yeah, because it, yeah, because it's a hundred bucks to get on the stores. So right, I'm, and of course, you, yeah. know, you you have something that's been around five, six years and it's established, and it's like yeah, man. Because holy shit, okay. Did you see the somebody genuinely released? Unfortunately, not for Linux. I've already sent them an email to see if we can get a Linux port of this. Asset Flip Simulator was released on Steam this week. And it clearly oh, wow. says this is nothing but fucking assets flipped directly to the mm-hmm. store in the bare minimum configuration Steam would require to be a game and boom, right on. They got right on. I mean, that clearly in their description, what they were doing. Yeah. Pro- no, proving it's, a point uh, for hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. I'm totally behind the uh, Valve just doing the pay what you want thing for open source games. Uh, preferably do the itch io model of pay what you want where people can just go oh i don't want to pay anything because it's an open source game fine you can do that or i want yeah i like this game i want to give the dev some money so you give them some money what i don't want them to do is to have a kickstarter type of thing with tears and rewards because when the project doesn't deliver there's going to be a lot of people pissed off at uh, open source games and i don't want that mm. I don't know. Or just make it ninety nine cents or something like that. So, yeah. Sure. I, 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 I mean, I mean, to that point again, have Steam have like a continuous development model so that you know, mm-hmm. oh, we're it's it for, so so things like distance uh, will, can just drop the pretense of being a released finished uh, game. I was about to say they they already have a continuous development model. It's called early access. It's called access. early access. Right. Yeah, and yeah. no one really yeah. seems to like it all that much. Oh, they they, <laughs> they love it, man. Uh, Manos is back, bitches. Yes. Master well, says, it's a, it's a can't, mod. Can't to be fair. There. Yeah, and it's a mod that I wouldn't have even given it a second look if I hadn't looked at the author. It's like, oh, Cheesness made this. Uh, you may know him as the person who ported uh, Day of the Tentacle and a couple other um, Double Fine games. So hey, uh, he made a mod for Hand of Fate Two, and he says that it, uh, it's a narrative focused. On in parentheses, no combat encounter chain, you'll get to know and spend time with a pet claw troll named Ruben. 
uh, who has a big heart, uh, heart, yes, heart and on. more enthusiasm than sense. So it's if you like the narrative uh, bits in Hand of Fate, this may be your jam. Me, I, the combat needs work, but I didn't, you know, hate it as much as Ven did. So <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, I, the combat was passable. It was enough to make it. I continue going on because I know I could get through this card bullshit and finally get mm-hmm. to something, you know, Vin smash. I enjoy that simple human being. Fuck off. Um, <laughs> however, when, once I discovered that you do, you can just roll your way out of every plausible situation in the game. That That's what killed it for me. Uh, this, this is like regular hand of fate minus the bits that I actually kind of didn't hate. So, um, not my cup, Jane. So, hey, uh, Jordan, do you have any thoughts on you? Kind of liked it, right? Not this particular uh, mod, but the game itself. I mean, I mean, it was, it was all right. Like again, again, my problem was just glowing like, endorsement from one Jordan Swift. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 absolutely. No, the the only thing I can think of is like, man, I really hope there's like some really fucked up, like <laughs> terrible ending to this. That's just like you gotta fucking take old Rubenev back and saw his head off. <laughs> Hey man, maybe you can take old Ruben out, saw his head off, and bring a friend. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Um, this is so people. We 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 we've talked about the um, I, I guess the mystery of Stardew Valley and how people seem to get addicted to it constantly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're gonna add something new to make it a little more addictive. They got the uh, multiplayer uh, now in beta. You can opt in via Steam or GOG. Uh, they got uh, direct IP connections. They got. Uh, Friend support for either Steam or God Galaxy. Well, I mean, really only Steam because that's <laughs> the only thing that matters, at least on this show. Um, and yeah, you uh, you gotta build a you gotta build a log cabin for your friends before they can uh, they can come into your game. And after that, it's just all regular Stardew Valley, but you can bring a friend along. Um, apparently, it's compatible with all the current saves, although they do recommend to back up your shit because mm-hmm. things will break. Um, and it's FNA, so I'm curious if it's going to be using Flibit's uh, special online sauce. So either way, expect bugs. Hmm. Yeah, I, I yeah. saw this. And Stardew Valley, uh, I think Pedro will explain what it is. The, for me, it's just to sit back, kids. Sit back and prepare yourself, because we're, we're going to launch one of the most snooze-inducing LGC live streams in the world. <laughs> So yeah, no, than Stardew the Valley is like that. Uh, it's going to be like slightly worse than this show. Just like it's farming simulator almost, where you need to basically set up a farm, get your crops going. Then you need to interact with the other people in town. And uh, Jordan mentioned last time we talked about this that the developer said, "Hey, look, the multiplayer beta is almost coming soon," and here it is. Uh, that you, if you give the other NPCs mayo, they like you. So we got, you know, Airwolf cosplay coming. Happy Cinco de Mayo, Stardew. Cinco de Mayo. I, man, I don't know. This is one of those jobs. Is like one of the, Exactly. That's how my brain processes the kidneys. Oh, Freudian slip. One of these jobs. That's It's like truck stimulator. <laughs> it's like that. that's work without getting paid, man. Um, okay. Uh, Zen engine hotfix, pubic release, Black Mesa, it's a thing. It's not what you're hoping for, man. This is just like, hey, man, all that lighting and shit that we spent some time reworking because reasons we don't ever want to finish the Zen level because we hate everything. Bunch of gang of fixes. Uh, patches. You get to play with the new engine. You get to see new lighting. Um, known issues. Flat flashlights don't work correctly. Always run something about outlines around weapons. And uh, where the fuck is... Just finish this game so we can play it and meet the Freemans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If just, you don't know what uh, black one's... okay, hang on. Uh, does, does this have multiplayer though? It, well, when synergy. we get synergy wow. modded, it and uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. They're they're on a separate engine now, so I don't think synergy works with it, does it? Yeah, um, okay, let, let me. Uh, they're not going to make synergy work with it until it's done. That's what synergy. Mm-hmm. The guys at synergy said they're like, okay, when ah, it's done, right. we'll make it work. So you don't know, relive your half life experience. Uh, Waiting for the, the, it is kind of like a dual simulation because waiting for that Zen map to get done is kind of like waiting for Half Life Three. You know, it's yeah. never going to happen. <laughs> so, 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 so neither are coming, is what I'm hearing. Giggity. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Now the, they say in the uh, the blog post that it's like, oh, we're working on the Zen engine, like Ven already mentioned. It's mostly the lighting bullshit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they say they also said that uh, they'll drop the Zen levels when the next engine release comes out, whatever the hell that means. So yeah, if you have like Mesa, let us know if the lighting looks, oh my god, so much better, it gave me an orgasm, or if it's just more of the same and they're coming up with excuses not to release Zen. Now I do want to point out that this does, uh, this latest update does have one new interesting feature. Oh? Mm Mm-hmm. It no longer launches on my Linux box. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, it it doesn't even it, just and ultimately, I'm not going to spend time until they get done with Zen. So I didn't even bother to like detrace it or anything. It's like ah, whatever. It'll, it'll get sorted. Um, <laughs> updates, updates, updates. Uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider. We talked about it last week. Uh, it ran through the chair QA position. Barrels out. They get a little patch for it. Uh, it's a public beta. You can drop into it. Right click. Go to properties. Head over to the betas and updates uh it's public and it supposedly might help reduce some of the spite nopes mm-hmm. that are most definitely a thing that a i think everyone's had that experience i forget who it was in uh on discord earlier this week it's like i love watching people oh it was steve-o he's like yeah i like watching yep. people when, because you know, in the Discord it shows, it's like you, you see him playing Tomb Raider, and they just get out, and he's like, "I like watching that because you know that shit crashed." And <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, to be fair, Pedro, you tried to stream it, and that shit just failed. <laughs> yeah, no, that was uh, horrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though the frame rate on the preview window on my end was smooth, it was coming out like a slideshow uh, on YouTube and it crashed once and the second time it actively froze my box and I had to <laughs> SSH in to kill it and restart the X session because that was just gone too. So yeah, no, it, it has issues, even on the beta. Uh, I don't have access to the PPA uh, that, uh, what was it, Feral himself or who is behind that PPA with the drivers? Oh, you don't need that anymore. Well, They're in well, the um, the the, oh, okay. the, right. the the Mesa drivers or the no 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 no. It's it, it's a Ubuntu thing. You wouldn't understand. Uh, it's <laughs> once I, I, I don't understand it, but too. Yeah, good, 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 good. Keep away from <laughs> it. Uh, here's the thing: once it gets to a state to a where I can play it reliably, and and it isn't known to hard luck boxes or X sessions. We'll get some mm-hmm. multiplayer in in an after shows, and maybe we'll play yeah. it in one of our other shows during the week. Uh, Murder Simulator, uh, Minecraft Besiege. style. Besiege, that's right. Update yeah. not 66 not, man. Yeah, they got uh, they have a new thing. Uh, you can see them building a fucking jet engine. Of course, that's a that is absolutely a thing you can do in your medieval murder simulator. <laughs> is just build planes. I love this game. Jet planes. Why the I know, fuck God? <laughs> Yeah, this game is fucked. It's great. Uh, and now they give you the option. Uh, you can because the the control scheme in uh, Besiege when you when you set things up is a little weird. They actually give you the opportunity now to um, to edit the controls so that you can actually move your murder machine around and fly fly your <laughs> aircraft ca- your fucking shield helicarrier around because you can build that in Besiege. So you can you, you can make not? rocket cars in Besiege. I mean, yes, you, you can. Str- you str- <laughs> oh man, that, see, ch- that's a that's a challenge, LGC guys. <laughs> Chat realm, get that done. We, we, we just we're, we're we're done doing rocket leagues in the after show. We got to do Besiege rocket league. <laughs> uh, but, that shit's gonna be fucked. Anyways, um, so now you can alt F four to win the game. Uh, they got uh, they got a couple other improvements, some bug fixes. Uh, so check check this out if uh, you're like I said, I'm still I'm still holding off just because I know. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, uh, no, I meant I meant like uh, I'm I'm waiting for it to like actually hit like some sort of proper like point where multiplayer is you know stable and everything is stable because i will get lost in that game perfecting my fucking murder cube you uh, what jordan says is the true truth because just the um multiverse that we played is like come on jordan let's go let's go let me like come on yeah i i i gotta fix this and that that yeah no this the, 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 this is one of those games where like i didn't expect to be as sucked in as i was until 
It's like, oh, this is Legos. All right. Yeah. Lots of mode activity. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. That's going to do it for the updates. Let's talk about some of the new games that are now available for our face organs. Yeah, like uh, Basingstoke. We talked about this a while ago. You can... It's 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 a one hit point self roguelike. So you got one you got one hit. If you if you get hit, you die. And uh, you got to sneak around the get sneak around Basingstoke, UK. So you can maybe mm-hmm. find Pedro and light him on fire. If mm-hmm. this uh, this video has anything <laughs> true true That's about it, west of England. I'm in the east. Just you know. Listen, it's all it's all England. It's like freaking three <laughs> centimeters across. It's a very tiny country. Um, yeah, so uh, we it's, it was an early access. It's out. The fucking price on Brad is a little mm-hmm. high. For 30, a little bit. 30 bucks. I mean, come on. For, at 30 bucks, you kind of expect it to roll a sausage or two. I mean. <laughs> yeah. To, and, and hell, even, even Steven Sausage roll is like, no, this is a fuck you hard game, and you will get your $30 mm-hmm. worth of time out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I like uh, roguelikes. I do. Uh, but the whole you have one HP thing. It could go one of two ways. Basically, it could make... Oh, it's a short game anyway, so you're just restarting, so you're not losing a whole lot of progress. That's fine. But if... It could get really repetitious if it happens to be a longer game and you need to be able to survive for an extended period of time to reach any of the quote-unquote checkpoints or whatever they have. I did send them email that didn't reply, but uh, yeah, I I am kind of curious to see just how good this could be. Yeah, 100% on that. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely curious. I'm not $30 curious, much like Steven's no. sausage roll. But, um, hey, Pedro, haven't you ever wanted to play, uh, what if, like, Borderlands, but it was a racing game? Uh, no. Too bad. Not they made it anyway. <laughs> so, uh, this is Trailblazers. This is a wipeout type game thing. Uh, it's been, uh, they had a little competition a while back where you could, uh, design one of the ships and if you, uh, you got it, uh, it would be in the game. And this one is that one that you have a sort of co-op thing where one player goes on ahead and paints a track, uh, and the other player on the same team will get a boost. Or if you're playing single player, you could just do one lap and paint it right. And if you go down a specific path that the AI opponents or the other people playing against you don't, then you get a speed boost whenever you go over your own color. And I have been wanting a Wipeout style racing game for a while, and I'm really, really hoping this one doesn't suck. Please let it not suck. Now, in all fairness, on Linux, we have a couple of Wipeout style games, and they're all dog shit. Yeah. That is, that's why I'm saying, please let this one not suck. <laughs> I, I mean, we don't have much of a bar. <laughs> just, just yeah. <laughs> don't be a crap no, Android. Don't have, much of a, don't have much of a bar to suck. I mean, you'll find, you'll find out in two days when it comes out. It so. does require a yeah. controller. Uh, yeah, and, and unless this thing's like... Wait, okay, if this thing doesn't have online multiplayer, it should have breaks. I know, that, okay. that, that's literally what I was checking right now. I was like, okay. wait, doesn't yeah, have it fucking... Does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Good, okay. good, good, good on you, Super Gonk. After show. You, um, hey guys. Yeah, you call us. We can sell some copies. Uh, that's definitely yep. a thing. Uh, brick Simulator. I'm. I'm Ch- only Chubrica. Chubrica. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm only half joking. Arcade shoot 'em up. Dodge orbs. That's right. Orbs are a thing that you must dodge. Destroy them with different weapons and superpowers. Pick up bonuses and crystals to improve Chubrick. Honestly, listen, the only reason I included this is because I wanted to make a brick simulator joke and I'm not ashamed of it, so. Seems legit. I, no, it doesn't look particularly engaging if we're being. I don't honest. even know what the fuck it's about, man. <laughs> I don't even know what it's going to cost. Arcade, shoot them up, dodge orbs, destroy them with different weapons and superpowers, pick up bonuses and crystals to improve chew break. The most informative that thing. Means I, listen, man, I've watched this trailer. The most informative thing on this fucking page is the notification that June 1st is three weeks from now. Yeah. It's basically it like Pang. Mm-hmm. Imagine Pang, the old Pang game, uh, but without it being fun or charming in any way. I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's like asteroids, but with a walking thing <laughs> on the bottom, you just run back and forwards with a brick on its head. 
Uh, hey, you know, I hate to point out that Strider was the only one that got the Pang reference, but yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right. is, 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 is that like the, the southern version of Pong? It's Pang? <laughs> no. Anyways. Sid, your hate mail to Jordan. Uh, people under glass. Um, yeah, uh, aquariums. Mega Aquarium is a game where you build an aquarium and watch people watch fish on your aquarium. I, I, I see. Here's here's the thing. I I played a lot of Sim Safari back in the day because like that was you like lonely. One of yeah, I I was lonely and that was like one of four PC games I had. Mm. Um, because my parents were very very strict on the ESRB rating stuff. So let Jordan Sphinx serve as an example. Okay, if you're thinking about denying your children decent video games because you think they're a little too violent, this is this 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. L- l- lack of an outlet makes you violent, not violent video games. Anyways, um, so yeah, you, you you build up an aquarium. Though something tells me uh, you're going to have a little more fun getting high and going to an actual aquarium and staring at octopods because mm-hmm. that's always fun. Also, yeah, it's big ass aquarium in Atlanta. Aquarium. Fuck you. You didn't let me bring in tartar sauce. I was reading through uh, the uh, description. Uh, it's like, oh, it's like theme hospital, but with aquariums. And no. No, 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 no. What is. I Listen, I don't know. When I see something like this, I'm like, somebody is genuinely going to enjoy that. And, you know, Flying Spaghetti Monster, bless them for everyone else. What the fuck's wrong with you? Oh, dude, it's it's totally like I, fucking farming simulator or whatever. The 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 people who are going to be into it are going to be super into it, and that's that's the demo they're targeting, right? I get the you point. Know, like, I get the point of farming simulator because with uh, American Truck Simulator and Euro Truck Simulator, it gives me that you know that Zen feeling of catharsis of just doing a thing and driving a truck around. Just, I get that. But this, this I don't get. Yeah, drowning don't. fish. No, not not unless I can pour like bleach <laughs> in a corner and watch them all run to the other yeah. side. Man, listen, that that that's well, so confusing. The, the, it makes this next thing, this next thing. I was just gonna say. Go ahead. Yeah, system requirements just require a sixty-four bit processor and operating system. So mm-hmm. you don't even you don't even need to run Linux to get this up and running. You just throw <laughs> throw the disk at your computer. At your CPU, right. just a CPU. <laughs> Yeah. All right. S- signal simulator. <laughs> um, it it kind of reminds me of like surgeon simulator via the aesthetic, but that's basically just pretend to be SETI. You 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 are Jody Foster in the movie Contact. You have to go rebuff Moth. See that would that would actually be a fun game. Like Matthew McConaughey is trying to sleep with you the entire time, and like you got to stop him from doing that. <laughs> I'm trying to like make up with your dead father. Carl Sagan shows up. I don't even know where yeah, I'm going. You're trying with to this. wake up with your dead father that's actually an alien. Matthew McConaughey, yeah. you're like, what are you doing? He's like, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. Hey, man, this is influenced by SETI. No shit. Uh, you're in the role to find signals of extraterrestri- extraterrestrial intelligence, English. Uh, what do you do? You download raw data and decode them. Earn se- man, do you know what? Save your money, uh, save your 1999, and just like, Download Ooh. SETI at home, crunch some numbers, and pretend that you're looking for Actually aliens. help SETI, yeah. Uh, Actually or help or SETI, you can, or uh, help the folding guys with uh, finding a cure for cancer. Just do anything else other than play this game, please. Mm. Or, or or mine Bitcoin. Well, this this game yeah. might mine some Bitcoin. It's like, no, it's going to help SETI. It's like, no, it's <laughs> clearly not playing chess. Uh, that's the thing. All right, I think I think that is for the Steam Linux update of the week. Coming soon is the Steam regular non-Steam update of the Steam week. I don't know. We're 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 gonna we're gonna we're gonna pad a very short segment by talking a lot about the NVIDIA GPU. New, new segments tuned. next. That's what he's trying to communicate. He needs a song. No. It's time for Shut Realm Appreciation Hour. Yeah, I'm bringing that one back because I honestly couldn't think of anything else uh, as we get into what the helmet. What 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 what, what you've boring. you've had all week, and that's the best you can do. Get, yeah, and it's, it's not, not it's not even an hour. It's like Shut Realm Appreciation, <laughs> like twenty three minutes, because we have nothing in this segment. <laughs> Listen, but so here, here, here's the thing, though. We have all the time in the world for you, especially those of you who go to LinuxGameCast.com and click that support the show button that has all sorts of affiliate links, LibrePay, um, Amazon affiliate links, New York affiliate links, Humble affiliate links. Uh, we got Bitcoin. 
We got PayPal, all sorts of good shit that you can click on and enter your credit card number to give us financial support. And of course, we got the good, good shit at uh, patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. The thing that funds literally five days a week of Linux Gamecast content. Correct, Amanda. That is, that is ridiculous. Like... This is, this is almost a broadcast network at this point. Hey, man, we, uh, we were talking in the middle of the show. It's like we effectively, you, you you lot have made all this possible. You're financing this because uh, we decided to do this risky-ass bullshit idea of like, hey, let's do a crowdfunded show, and patrons helped made that happen. But, you know, Pedro has a show on Tuesday. These are our own separate shows. Jordan does Thursday. I do Friday. I think we're going to have a ratings war this month to see who can do the <laughs> <laughs> the most amount of views on YouTube. I'm sorry, Jordan. I just thought so, that wait, might wait. be a fun idea. Yeah, it could be like a ratings race slash. You know, you know what? Never mind. Hit the eject button on that. <laughs> anyway, becoming a Patreon <laughs> has a lot of us. <laughs> Thank you, Pedro. That was the joke. Thank you for saying it out loud. You're 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 very perceptive. My, not subtle. Fuck, fuck at all. <laughs> be, 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 become, become a Patreon. Get access to Discord. You get early show note access. You get your name in the credits when we do the big Star Wars crawl at the end. You get access to uncut bots. You get to go on game streams. Hey, we got we had uh, Empty randomly show up on Thursday because he's like, yo, man, I'm on Patreon. I want to come into your multiplayer game. And we're like, sure, buddy. You can come on in. Um, hell, you, and yeah, you can even buy your way onto the goddamn show. And we, it, it's it's like a it's like a four dollars a month. It's very very cheap you get a you get a lot of fucking content to go along with that so i'm not i'm not gonna say it's worth your time and or money but it's totally fucking worth your time and or money. discord server uh, business got, uh, can hang out with us the rest of the week indeed yeah. and uh we're, we're, yeah where's frank at today um let's see if i can pull up frank's live feed um frank are you with us buddy oh shit oh, oh, he's, oh okay. he's, he's back he's starting in the gym war, war. Yeah, he yeah. is uh, starting nuclear wars. What are you doing? Maybe you're even like, why, why is Frank? Who is Frank? Frank is the uh, skeleton. He is uh, our man. He holds the fine, upstanding cannibal wall, a list of the people helping us stick together the studio, going that extra mile to uh, basically enable cheat mode for us. And uh, don't worry, they're all in the credits are all listed. Anyone who picks up anything up to and including UPSs, which totally happened. Mike G. Uh, straight hooked us up. You end up on the fuck wall. I think we're officially out of room on fuck wall 2.0. We're going to have to go over to 3.0. We got to work something out. But if you do that, you also get to type in basically anything you damn want off of our wish zone. And uh, I'm going to have to read it out. So let's make use of that. Mr. G. Gonzalo. He says, Brother Vin, hopefully this will keep the lights on. When all elks has gone dark, use it in good health. Also, comma, be careful not to drop it on your foot because my dumbass might have dropped a microphone stand piece on my dumbass foot and that really hurt. <laughs> uh, no, like legit. Thank you. This gives us a fighting chance, a 50 50 chance of when the power goes off, of us still being able to stay on the line without effectively 45 minutes of downtime of having to reset everything back up. And mm -hmm. this, this, this is not some, you know, jive ass APC, man. Turkey, Turkey. Check it out. <laughs> I, I, I got a beauty shot right here. There it is. It's currently working right now. And, uh, that's pretty awesome. You know, I, <sighs> we, I, I think we got one. I think we got one more thing we got to talk about though, with that uh, thing you do on Friday, uh, Friday, uh, oh yes, Fubar. Oh yeah, man. Uh, you spammed everyone on uh, YouTube. Earlier, I did right? because I, I love everyone so much. I thought I would let you know that we do the Fubar show, and I put it in its own playlist just to organize it. And uh, sorry about blowing up anybody's feed for that, but if you go to our YouTube web zone, you can do that. Hey man, we got this new UPS. You, you want to test it? <laughs> yeah, sure. Hey, yeah. hey, well, Netflix Chaos Monkey this shit, man. Just start unplugging. Pick up the power. See what happens. I, 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 it, 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 this will work. This, this isn't the stupidest thing we've done. Not by nope. a long shot. That's straight up Netflix's reliability, reliability engineering technique. Hey, let's kick out a power cord and see what happens. All right. Hang on. Stay up. We're good. Three, two, one.
No. All right. Fine. No. Okay. We yeah. tried. We tried. No, nothing happened. Okay. Nope. Let's talk some shit about NVIDIA. Indeed. Yeah. So you may remember uh, the whole GeForce partnership program, which was, uh, well, it wasn't so much well received as it was uh, received with a hail that highly resembled a shitstorm. So NVIDIA are basically saying that, no, uh, this was very bad received. Yeah, uh, and we don't really want to do it anymore, so there you go. No more GPP for anybody. And uh, AMD was basically like, uh, yeah, we kind of like the whole GPP thing because it made us look like the good guys, so uh, why you do that? (laughs) But yeah, no more GeForce Partner Program. Uh, NVIDIA doesn't really explain anything about the partner program. They just say, yeah, uh, uh, the rumors, conjecture, and mistruths go far beyond its intent. Rather than battling misinformation, we have decided to cancel the program. Well, yeah. And by not addressing any of the actual issues, you're just, you know, fueling the people who are saying, yeah, this is some underhanded bullshit you're trying to pull. Quite possibly. One thing I do want to mention, uh, real real quick about because I saw Strider says the Anvil. The Anvil was the first thing I ever ordered with Amazon Prime shipping, just because I wanted to test that business. Uh, where, where the UPS was shipped, which is to my rental property, the dude who manages the property for me is like, "Did you order another Anvil?" <laughs> <laughs> he knows. He knows. <laughs> I was like, "What the hell?" <laughs> All right, back to bashing Nvidia uh, as we are often one to do, man. What the hell, NVIDIA? No, I no, mean, no, we're, we're NVIDIA shills. Not, no, we... we mm-hmm. No, no, Absolutely. We, oh, are we being shields for NVIDIA? Is that what we're doing this week? <laughs> Hush, yeah, girlfriend. Let somewhere. daddy talk. Uh, misinformation. <laughs> you know, misinformation from those contracts that effectively had NDAs in them. Man, who would have thought about that, NVIDIA? No one saw that coming. I just don't like mm-hmm. how they're like trying to phrase this. as like, well, you know, this has turned into a distraction, and we're a little company, and we got like three engineers that could work on this, and it's it's distracting them from the man. Fuck right off, seriously. Um, and and here, here here's the thing too. Like, what what it says on paper is fine for NVIDIA, but it sets it sets a precedent and it sets an implication. And that's what people were actually concerned about, right? Mm-hmm. They're like, oh yeah, people can people can totally create their own gaming brands and whatnot, but people don't pay attention to this stuff. People will see turbo graphics, fucking Strix, whatever, and they'll be like, oh, this is the card for me because this has all the fucking YOLO attached to it. Yeah. <sighs> Ultimately, uh, at the end of the day, we need to thank Hard OCP because they were the ones who originally rolled out with this, like, mm-hmm. yo, sketchy shit. Uh form your own opinions but warning sketch your shit ahead but no uh who is it pedro did you have a good point yeah lo and behold you did is you know the company has already you know drank the fuck out of this kool-aid and they're like shit okay mm-hmm. well we're coming out with amd branding things like nvidia totes didn't demand in the contract that we can't talk about mm-hmm. and what the fuck is up with that they're like wait a wait a minute what Okay, we've already started the process of like new. Think about it, man. New packaging and stuff like that. Mm. What do we do with this? It's like, ah, I don't know, man. Jordan, was this like uh, just like reaching for the sun? It's like no, melted wings. I see. I, I I don't know. What what it basically boils down to is the Nvidia marketing department crunched the numbers and they figured, you know what, the money that we'd make on enforcing the GPP is probably less than what we're going to lose in terms of bad publicity. Mm-hmm. But here, mm-hmm. here, here's the thing, Nvidia, you you don't have to worry because you know you know where the real money is the fucking enterprise on scientific GPU market. You know those guys who will drop a couple hundred k on bulk ordering scientific GPUs. Yeah, you still got that mm-hmm. market on lock. AMD's not yeah. touching that at yeah. all. Got to give AMD a little bit of credit, man. Um, they're uh, th- throwing a little bit of shade was pretty decent on this. They're like, yeah, by the way, yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, oh, uh, Nvidia is doing this really shady thing, and we're not. Okay, look, everyone, we're the good guys. We're not uh, forcing you to sign an NDA just so you can sell our GPUs. 
But now, yeah, now here, 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 here's, here's, here's the other thing, too, is that if AMD was in the position that NVIDIA was, they'd try the exact same fucking thing. Absolutely. Of course they would. 100%. 100%. 100%. No, no, my yeah. soulless corporation <laughs> is morally superior to your soulless corporation. Oh, anyway, let's talk about uh, new A, not AMD. Drivers, NVIDIA drivers, they're out. Uh, new support for new GPUs, GTX 1050 with the Max-Q designs, the Quadro, basically two pieces of kit you can't afford. And ultimately, end user, what you're going to see from this, they've added some Spear V optimizations uh, to try to make up for some of the nonsense in the last couple of driver releases, preferably the last one. There is uh, a little bit of performance increase. One thing I always like to test with Vulcan is Sirius Sam BFE into the spider's nest. It's the second level in BFE when you walk through that lighted um, area. Which, oh, yeah, if, if it's pitch black or not, yeah. Well, no, it's not even that, just the performance, because that is just brutal, brutal. And it's managing to stay over 100 frames per second at right. 1080p. So that's up from, you know, 89, 90 with my 980. So good on that. A couple of updates uh, added some EGL reporting for NVIDIA settings. Nothing uh, really crazy. There is an option to, what was it? You can kind of back out of some of the Spear Beast junk. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you're it's, having, it's, a, it's an environment variable. All right. Yeah, if you're having or, or, issues or, or with they the give you, uh, uh, you can disable it and go back to the old way of doing things, which should give you, uh, well, it doesn't give you any of the, the improvements, but it should let whatever it is that doesn't work right now Keep on working until the developers of said thing fix it. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, they, they also added the uh, support for the latest version of Xorg as well, which I found out because I wanted to. This, this prompted the removal of the the 460 was uh, when I because uh, I upgraded to Fedora 28 this week because it got mm-hmm. released. And brain, uh, yeah, the old the 390 drivers are just like no, this is this version of X is too new. I don't know what the fuck's going on. So you got to upgrade to the. Uh, the latest, the 396, uh, 24, mm-hmm. 60. Dot 48, yeah. dot Thursday. Um, dot 192, dot 168, dot Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Hey, man. I mean, they work. They didn't fix my Tomb Raider problem, so they work for that. No. Whatever. I don't it's know. still crashy. Yeah, this 390 series of drivers have just been a hot, junky mess. So yep. hopefully that shit gets sorted. So let's go from NVIDIA to Mesa. Mesa. Yes. Uh, specifically, the Vulcan Rad V driver for Radeon users, and they have now enabled out of order rasterization by default. Now, this was already in the driver; you could enable it with a uh, an environment variable previously. Now it's enabled by default, and you can disable it with an environment variable if you so wish. They uh, say that you really shouldn't expect too much of a performance improvement, uh, more than one percent, but. The gain seems consistent, according to Samuel P- uh, mm. Pitoise. I, I, Pinochet, I yeah. Yeah. yeah, something like that. So, uh, yeah, uh, performance improvement for Rad V. It's always good to see. It's uh, even though it's a conservative implementation on their part, seeing a admittedly negligible performance improvement, but one that is visible across the board, that's pretty good. That's yeah, really good. It's, it's, it, 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 it's so good. You copied my thing almost verbatim in the show notes. Uh, but no, Blage it, it, Marizzo because, strikes again. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but one, one, one of the things about like, yeah, it's only 1%, but if you can get like a consistent 1% uh, performance improvement, and then you just keep adding like smaller increments yep. of uh, performance improvements, then all of a sudden uh, 20 updates down the road, Hey, things are a quarter faster than, or uh 75% faster than they used to be. That's pretty good. Yeah, so, man. Uh, you can always just blindly extrapolate, and that always works. And stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Math, it's, it's math. Don't, 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 don't you understand numbers? About no, that? I can't count. Uh, I can count to purple. Don't make dolphins cry, baby. Well, uh, someone made dolphins cry back in the day, and it was called WX Widgets. And if you have a a little bit of time on your hands, you can read the the embellished story of the Dolphin emulator. They have uh, some pretty pictures, some Zelda pictures, and uh, they tell their story of how the, um, the emulator started 
And all was great until someone cast a shadow on the fact that WX Widgets was bound to die sooner or later. And then they decided to move to QT, and there was dissent in the ranks because some people didn't want QT, other people really wanted QT. But, hey, QT is not a default. Uh, they're going to be basically QT getting one rid more time. of all QT. the WX widgets uh, as time goes on. So I'm okay with this. The WX widgets was cancer, so I'm okay with this. <laughs> They also, they also added a little bit of an auto updater, so you can keep your mm-hmm. dolphin up to date without having to constantly recompile and everything. Though I'm not sure how that affects the next version. What with uh, you know, compilers. yeah, it seems to be more Windows, Windows gear to that one. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, um, WX one widgets can just simply die in a fire. Period. Everyone, mm-hmm. if you if you've had a experience with it, I'm rest assured it was a negative one. Uh, it's Dolphin. That's good. They're still working. I mean, yep. there, there, there are no uh, PlayStation 3 emulator. Uh, breakneck speed. PCS 3 no. is kind of the new hotness, yeah. Mm-hmm. So good on them. Though, though, though to be fair, the, uh, our PSCS3 didn't have to re-implement an entire GPU on the GPU in Vulcan. Yo, yeah. dog. <laughs> hey, man, since we're in the business of re-implementation, Might and Magic 8 in Unity, why not? Fuck it. re Re-nipplementation, yeah. Re-nipplementation. Uh, Re-nipplementation. Uh, this, this is a thing from uh, P. Jashiak. Uh, links to this is all in our show notes. Um, if you liked Heroes of Might and Magic 8 uh, from 2001, you can... Well, you can, you can get into the game. You can get into a map, and there's, some, there's a workable uh, GUI where there's a mini-map and uh, controls and whatnot. It's still under development, and Homeboy's actually made some decent uh, progress in, I think, the five months was like the... Five months ago mm-hmm. was like the earliest commit that I could find. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah, so most, most of the maps are loadable. Um, there's, there's the UI as for mentioned, you can check this out, build it. You need the, the original mind and magic, which you're probably going to need to get off of GOG, uh, to play this. But, uh, what, one of the, one of the first things I saw in, in this GitHub link, uh, one of the first issues is why not Godot? And the guy's like, cause I wanted to use unity. Although I would actually recommend if you're thinking of starting up a project like this, maybe use Godot cause you know, it's open yeah. source. you can do whatever you want with it. Yeah. But you, you can't really poo on the game. It's like, maybe a, no, you, no. unity is a it, skill you want to learn. Tool. Right. Um, it, it, it's, it's not the tool. It's the tool who uses the tool. That's exactly what a tool would say. Tool, tool, tool. You're, 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 you're a tool or towel. whatever. <laughs> I'm a towel. You want to get high? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Thought about it. Um, Okay, that's the thing. That's a little crazy. Uh, And again, there's nothing wrong with uh, Unity at all. And I think that that's a good learning experience. So let's try to re-implement an engine with a modern engine. Because, yo, dog, uh, you like engines in your engines? Software preservation, man. Hey, man. It's it's important, yes. Speaking of engines. Yep. Unreal 492. They have a forum post. It's not a uh, full uh, full uh, thing on their blog, but you can download it. You can check it out from the GitHub, etc., etc., etc. I uh, did the old yeah. Control F Linux. Um, mm-hmm. They had a couple issues uh, fixed with the latest release. Number number one, apparently their uh, start time method uh, fell out of sync with their uh, seconds object or something like this. So this was causing some issues. And now you can actually run UE4 games on a machine with less than two gigs no, of RAM. Nay, Why you would want to nay, do this? Nay, nay. <laughs> uh, no, you, you can launch the server the server. With less oh, than two the gigs. Ser- the Be- server. Because, yes. you know, your server, two gigs of how, where, where do you find those elusive one gig dims these days? Uh, well, <laughs> Amazon, running it in EC2. eBay, yeah. <laughs> Try to make a joke, but fuck it. <laughs> no, no humor. That's not allowed in the Linux game. Oh, no, quit, quit making Period. things fun. No. Uh, <laughs> no, never. That's cool. It's Unreal Engine. Uh, oh, I meant to ask you earlier, Pedro. Maybe you knew the uh, Hexen modern. Is, is that Unreal Engine? It looks Unreal Engine. I didn't get it. It looks like it, but uh, I didn't see any mentions of any actual engines. Yeah, I, I'll find out during the break. I will open that folder and take a peek. Cause it's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brought to you by virtual programming. Okay. Uh, that's the thing. It's good to see progress on Unreal Engine because we need it. We need that tools. We need the tools to be better, more developed. And they're, we're still seeing Linux bug fixes. That's always promising because we want a future to where porting houses do not need to exist. Indeed. 
Uh, I guess that that's it for the regular ass news. Coming up next, we're getting some fursuits on. It's hot in here, so it's going to get sweaty and gross. Coming up Tex-Mex next? What? I don't know. Co- coming up Tex-Mex, yeah. Burritos. We're, we're, we're going to eat some tacos. We're going to eat some tacos on stream. It's going to be tasty. All right. We're, we're back. No no fursuits, as, as promised, but Ooh. we got wizard robes. And that's, <laughs> that's the next best thing. Wiz- wizards are below furries in the hierarchy of stuff I just made <laughs> up. What about furry this wizards? Is- i I demand i demand we we, we don't tread into their domain they will fuck us up (laughs) all right (laughs) anyways this is full metal furries we're gonna throw some chairs at it it's from cellar door games guys brought you rogue legacy it's written uh, it's developed it with uh, (laughs) fna that thing that flip it uh, designs flip it's not avocado and um (laughs) they uh what is it uh rather you can pick it up for about 20 bucks what is it from the creators of Rogue Legacy comes a true cooperative action RPG, Full Metal Furries. Puts an emphasis on team play with a unique combat system where everyone is important. Not really. Play on the couch, alone, or with friends, or make an online party of up to four players. Uh, these guys did send us some keys, so thank you for that. And we'll begin the chairquisition where we take a game like this, talk about it, uh, play it, Maybe do a little quality assurance that should have been done before they pushed it out mm-hmm. and uh, give you a score based on some chairs. One chair means that it's garbage. Two chairs means that it's meh. Three chairs means that it's all right. It's pretty good. And four chairs means that it's amazeballs. And we got our categories of doom. We apply these two. Makes with the working shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So, but what? Mike's with our gig. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, how does it work on Humbuntu? Still running the 1710. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to. Do that until it's EOL, probably, to the point release comes out. Uh, well, with Ryzen 7 980, it, it runs all right. It's playable. We played a little bit in the after show, like week before last, something like that. But, yeah, uh, this game, like right off the bat, is going to lose just straight up chair because of the inexplicable fl- frame drops. It, it's mm-hmm. a real issue, man. I mean, does it really impact the game? Not really. I mean, this is side-scroller hipster pixel bullshit, but... You know, we kind of thought it was due to some network fuckery because here, between here and the Torontos and uh, Space Britannia, but mm-mm, single player still exists. Outside of that, everything else works. It launches, it runs in full screen, it runs in window, 1080p, UHD, you name it, it makes it possible. So I'm through it, solid three. Oh, oh yeah, those frame drops, they real. I uh, tested this out on Fedora 26 64 bit with the uh, AMD A10 5800K and the GTX 750 Ti, as well as Fedora 28 64 bit with the i7 6700K and the GTX 980 with two 4K monitors plugged in. Uh, yeah, frame drops. It, it'll, it'll, for me, it went as low as about 18 FERPs in like some random areas for no reason mm-hmm. and then would just go back to normal once you get out of that area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, three chairs. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's really weird because it's only some specific levels. It's like the FERPs just drop down to 15, and if you go to some of the latter levels, it's like single digits on the frame rate. It gets really bad. Uh, I don't know what the hell's up with that, but I know that if one of your character dies, uh, even if you're playing single player, one of the character dies, and all of a sudden the frame rate improves. Hmm. significantly sometimes it even goes back to like 60 so i don't know what the hell's up with that but it gets you ding the chair over here running solus 3.99995 uh with the gtx 1080 and horizon 5 16. man that version of solus is really evil when it does handstands uh we do want Mm -hmm. to point out that flibbit ibbity jibbity ibbity bobo is aware of this issue and is currently looking into it so let's go right into the shities and the sounds. Jordan, how's that? Yeah, that, that, well, that was that was three chairs for makes with the working people can, for those people can mass. No, they can't. We we we. I was told. Hey, if you want the full, yeah, let me just say this: if you want the full detailed rundown of all this business, go check out the show notes. It's going to be in there. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Eh, yeah. All right. Anyways, um, everything's commonly done in terms of like uh, design and whatnot. All the characters have unique designs and they're cute, but they're a little unremarkable. Uh, all the enemies are very like clearly delineated 
Um, until the bullet hell segments, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, they very clearly got the composer back from Rogue Legacy, although I think Rogue Legacy actually had the better soundtrack of the two. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it fit it fit the it fit what the game was doing a little more than what we got here. Um, and I mean, let's be real: guns go pew, shields go smash. Uh, and that that's basically it for this game. So I'll give it three chairs. It's well done. It's it's not like they cheaped out. It just the they uh it just doesn't run well. Pedro? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh the one complaint I have is the sharpening that's uh, in heavy air quotes there. The sharpening filter, it makes everything look odd, like half blurry. Because the game, if you disable the sharpening filter, it's all just hipster pixels. There's absolutely no denying that. But if you enable the sharpening filter at even at just 1080p, it looks weird. Uh I get that it's only for people who really hate the pixels and they ro- don't want to see them, but it doesn't look good. I'll give it three chairs, Ben. Mm. All right, check this out, man. Looking at it, you know I love it because it's hipster pixel bullshit, uh, but it's well done, <laughs> hipster pixel bullshit. So uh, you can't knock them for that. It it hits that aesthetic. They're, they're going for what they're going for. I mean, Two years ago, it would have been like a like a high end SNES looking game. Now it's just it's its own thing. Hipster pixel bullshit. Um, the only issues I have with it graphically, it's not with the game so much itself. It's, it's with the character blindness. If you have four people rocking, you can get lost. Hell, you can get lost by yourself in some of the bullet hell that we're going to be talking about in a short second. But when it comes to sounds outside of just what we did in multiplayer. Didn't jam with it too hard. Uh, my time was spent listening to something else because I don't really feel you need it. So there's that. Yeah, with these yahoos, I'm going to give it three as well. Yep, yep. Three cheers for uh, Shining Sounds Controls. Pedro, tell us about how FNA has ruined controller input. Actually, it hasn't. Uh, I have absolutely no complaints about the controls because my 8-bit do... Uh, NES Pro controller right here worked out of the box as expected because it's FNA. Let's face it, if it doesn't, something's gone awfully wrong. And no, it was uh, sensibly laid out. Everything, all the buttons did exactly what I expected them to do. Uh, It takes some learning of the different classes to see which actions they have mapped to each button. But uh, it's mostly A does the movement ability, B does the special attack, uh, X does the regular attack, and Y does the uh, like the counter move or the really like the sniper drops the mine. There's a couple of interesting uh, toying around that they do with the different characters. But yeah, four chairs for me. Mm. Over here, man, with the Steam controller, I tried it. Aerial controller, Gabe's nipples, plugged it in, worked out of the box. No issues. Didn't have to reconfigure anything. Everything's logically laid out, too. That's really nice to see. Uh, it's side-scrolling brawler, so it's kind of hard to cock up button match- mashing. They didn't do it, so good on them. Four chairs. Yeah, on the DualShock 4, everything worked out of the box. Got the correct button prompts because FNA. The only reason I'm thinking a chair is because sometimes I feel like the some of the inputs don't register, especially when you're like getting corner fucked by a bunch of enemies. <laughs> um, so um, that 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 is a very clear issue, especially like when you do- and the the other thing too, and I'll elaborate a little bit more in the fun section. But the cooldown mechanic, at least for like the dodge uh, ability, that they expect you to spam in several segments, just mm-hmm. doesn't work. All that well, so that's enough to dig in a chair. Uh, let's all give it three, but still makes it three chairs for the controls. And then, once you once you start us off with the the fun multiplayer, play metal full metal furries, check it out, man. It's a little bit of all right. Unfortunately, single player, hella boring, with a big heaping side of boring next to it. You got to say leveling up the different cl- the classes that you have. That's kind of neat, but. Really calling them separate classes a bit of a stretch. Uh, it's basically, you know, they have slightly different abilities. I don't know if you'd go as far to say it's completely, you think, uh, like Team Fortress 2 or something like that one. I think classes. This, not so much. The combat, it works. Uh, however, I do say in multiplayer, it's kind of fun because they color code, you know, this color enemy can only be attacked by this class. That makes things fucky interesting fun hard pain in the ass but in single player that can just eat a bag of dicks that that's kind of a useless mechanic that causes you to waste your time and get killed to death a lot 
uh, big, big thumbs up for letting us skip those fucking cutscenes because you know, this is a little brawler. I, I'm sorry. I know you got a story. I know somebody on the development team spent time writing a story. Some people are into that and they want to read it. I'm just not that person. I went to options like is Oh, right there. Disable cutscenes. Thank you. That was awesome. Good people. Uh, with this in single forever alone mode, uh, I gotta say this is all right. It's like, okay, you do this, you can upgrade your abilities. You can find, uh, items, the scrolls unlock blueprints and, you know, all right, better weapons. That's cool. Collect gold, buy shit. Um, but I lost interest. If you're watching the video, it quickly turns into bullet hell, bullet hell with enemies trying to murder you to death on top of that. So I was like, yeah, fuck it. I'm out. Tapped out. Uh, still party game local. It's got online multiplayer as well. So you might want to pick it up if you're just looking for something to do in an after shows or something, but I'll give it a solid two. Yeah. Honestly, the, the multiplayer is what saves this game. Single player is manageable because you can like swap between the various classes you get, you get to pick one and then you get to pick a backup that you can swap to. And yeah, Ben, the, your 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 point about the um, the color coded enemies in Sinclair is super annoying, especially when like the one there's like a bunch of you're you're playing. So I, I was playing with the uh, the tank and the engineer because the engineer has the most spammable dodge. Um, mm-hmm. and when and it basically comes down to like you got corner fucked, you switch to another character, you escape, but then everyone else on the field can only be attacked by that one person who has like no health. And so now you're just playing the dodging game mm-hmm. and it, it, then, then it becomes a bullet hell. And that's not my jam. I've said it multiple times on the show. I am not into bullet hells. They're not my thing. Um, I mean, and here's the thing, like uh, if you throw in some friends getting curb stomped by the whole area denial mechanic of the, the latter parts of the game, you're going to have yourself an on right, all right time and online multiplayer works. It's not like, um, Charlie Murder or Dishwasher, where things got a little fucky, the FNA networking mm-hmm. is pretty solid, all things considered. Um, but fun wise, it's just kind of a middle of the road game. It's Ro- Rogue Legacy was, uh, I think, in all aspects, Rogue Legacy was the much stronger game by Cellar Door. Mm-hmm. This is this mm-hmm. is an interesting um, take. This is them trying to do something uh, completely different, which I understand. You don't want to make the same game over and over and over again. That's cool, right? But uh, this is this is not their their best. I'll I'll give it a two. Yeah, I honestly I didn't hate the single player. In fact, I was enjoying it quite How a lot. How did you get killed at this point? Uh, because that one you can't actually attack the uh, the turrets that are surrounding Pe- you. In Pedro, the map. That's yeah, one of the... yeah, How did you get killed? Though is what I'm asking. I know you can't attack the. T- I'm just like, how did you die? Yeah, I kept getting shot. I wasn't very. I'm not very good at the whole bullet dodging bit. I just like to go Andrew, in and you smash shoot yourself people. With smaller caliber bullets, and then you'll work <laughs> exactly. Work and you do large caliber. Yeah, but I didn't. I genuinely did not hate the single player. I may not be very good at it. I will be the first one to admit that. But I didn't hate it. In fact, I was enjoying it a lot until I got to the point where the frame rate dropped. It's like okay, maybe it's just this level. And then I got to another level further down the line where it dropped, and it kept dropping the more I progressed through the level. It's like, what the fuck? Well, that's this game for me. Those frame drops really killed my investment in it with a quickness. I, I will, you know, I'm not like a frame rate purist by any means or measure. Yes, I will take a totally game. Is. No, I'm not. I will take a game that's locked at 30. If it doesn't really need it, I played a lot of uh, South Park, The Circuit Truth, and that's locked at 30, and it, I didn't finish it, but it wasn't because of the frame rate. It's just because eh, it's not on Linux. But I can take that. If it's a smooth or at least consistent or even intentional um, frame rate drop, then yeah, I can take it. But in this game, they're not, and it gets so bad that uh, you could probably make a PowerPoint presentation look smoother than this game. So, 
two chairs. I think the biggest thing is, is like right when we started this Strider uh, and Shot Realm, see, sweetheart, I'm giving you some much deserved attention, uh, <laughs> immediately rolled out. He was like, they're going to take time explaining that they can run a 2D pixel game on the, with a 980 and a Ryzen 7, which is like, oh, sweetheart, you just walked into that, didn't you? Um <laughs> That's the yeah. Problem. The game definitely has some performance issues. It does, and, and I, I think yeah, the Flip it's working on it, but he's like, working on it. But the confusing thing is, a yes, you should be able to curb check this game, and b there there's no rhyme and or reason to the slowdown. That's not a predictable thing. It wouldn't happen when you would think it would happen. So yeah, there, there's some fuckery going on. Something is horribly wrong behind. The, not horribly wrong behind the scenes. It's a minor inconvenience, but still. Yeah. Mm. That's that's two chairs for fun. Two chairs for the um, final score. We got, do we got anything we want to add before we uh, close it off? Uh, just kind of not sure if one. I think maybe it would uh, hit uh, maybe two two chairs with an asteroid. With if we didn't have the performance issues and if yeah. you were only going to be playing it uh, in multiplayer because the single single player experience I, I think is kind of lacking. Yeah, and I, I mean, like, uh, so I played a bunch of this game on my uh, on my roommate's account mm-hmm. um, because he was he was, um, and we we had three players going, and it was it was it was actually an all right time. Um, all, with all that going, it's just the yeah, the single player is not particularly fun in my opinion. Yeah, so um, mm-hmm. I think that's it. Coming up next, we talk about the spooge of a deity, and Pedro gets the claw. Are you on the internet? Nope. Do you have an opinion? Uh Uh-uh. No. No? Really? Anyone here have a computer? (laughs) If you do have an opinion, you can go to escapecast.com for a slash contact or just hit the contact button. You broke it. God damn it. It's almost the same time again. Just hit the contact button on the nav bar and you'll be presented with a form, a form which you can fill with your opinion and your email address and your name, maybe a subject and figuring out what the hell the captcha is this week. So yeah, you could tell us what we did wrong, what we did wrong or what we did wrong more wrong on the show yes <laughs> wrong is... you're not allowed to do that on contact page it's only for relationship <laughs> advice ah uh, yes you can do that too true story uh yeah. <laughs> coming up first man john martinez he writes in salutations linux gamecast people i'm john martinez from dark one a small independent game studio based in macedonia uh mm-hmm. after a year in development we just finished odium to the core our f- All right, it is called To the Core. I just threw the To the Core in there for the mm-hmm. funds. Uh, our first commercial game. The game was born from a prototype we made on the Global Game Jam. And that word in 2013. Uh, I am sending you the Steam keys for review purposes or just try the game and have some fun. Please don't publish any reviews before the 11th of May. And hey, man, we talked about this and they were mm-hmm. like, oh, somebody talked about a game. Uh I, I've it launches. <laughs> yeah, all right. It yeah, it, it's tappy chicken with uh, with yeah. sperm. We, we, we're gonna try it out. We're, we're at least uh, we're gonna give it a look before it's sperm chicken. Mm. <laughs> sperm chicken, man. It, it's uh... <laughs> listen, listen. You go, you go to the Kentucky Fried Chicken. You'd be like, yo, man, I want some sperm chicken. <laughs> hey, listen to this. So I'm reading the Steam description, it and it says it's like a single button music based game. So it's single button, so it'll work on that new Atari system, right? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> Pro tip: I'm selling copies right there. Uh, all right, all right. Well, I guess I guess we'll take a look at it at some point and maybe throw some uh, some shares at it. Seems yeah. legit. What do we get up next? We have up Tim. Next we got uh, he says, uh, "I for one welcome our new me cyborg overlords. All hail Space Britannia and Doom be Jordan, Jemperer of Man." Cheers, Tim. It, so it, it, uh, it's Tim. pronounced Yemperer. You you fake Spanish person. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's because Jordan Jemper. <laughs> it doesn't. It, it doesn't matter. Your Pedro's fake Spanish confirmed. I'll just see twenty eighteen. Tight. But yeah, all of this because of the uh, the gif that he also very kindly included, which uh, 
Yeah, I kind of want one of those. I'm not entirely sure if my uh, nubbins on my right hand are uh, long enough to uh, be able to actuate the thing, but I want one of those. I really do. Do they vibrate, though? That's what I'm saying. Can you put it in your cock? They could. <laughs> um, I'm sure you can do that, too. What we're looking I, I at for everyone waiting. at home is this, this is like the, the of glove without the glove part that's got metal fingers that you could like clearly put shit in like bullets and it's, yes. fire. It, it's, there, it's, it's the of glove uh, for people who didn't use the of glove but now have no fingers. Exactly. <laughs> for 1995, yeah. you, you can regain some form and function of, uh, yeah, that. I don't know, man. That's the thing. Yeah, it's it's uh, yeah. it's they're made by uh, Naked Prosthetics, mm-hmm. and their uh, main f- function seems to be for people who had their fingers amputated, and they're they're all custom made. I had a look at their website; they don't seem to have an HQ here in the UK, but uh, it, it, I, ooh, I I I want one of those. I want See, one of when, those when really I was watching bad. when I was. When I was watching the part about like the guy hammering the nail, and I was like half expecting him to just like slam it into one of the fingers and just shatter it. <laughs> if you could just like, get like on, one yeah. permanently locked, you know, um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> just like hey, how's it going? <laughs> yeah. Oh no, not for my dad. It's, it's malfunctioning. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, just just on the topic of like modern prosthetics, some of them are getting really cool. Oh yeah, yeah man. Like, um, like, yeah. Just- Bionics as a whole, man, and so it's definitely going to be a. Yeah. This I like we're, because we're, it's we're, mechanical. There's just not a whole lot to go yeah. wrong. So yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's just a bunch we're, of spring we're, we're, and uh, the actuator with the that you know hooks around the nubbins. That's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Listen, it's 2018. We live in a future where cyborgs <laughs> exist. That's the long and short of it. <laughs> yep. We're not going to do better than that, ladies and gentlemen, because in that bombshell, it's time to cue the music. You can always find us around 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, unless something cray-cray happens, which has been known to go down once or twice. Um, I'm Vin Stone. Find me on the internet, uh, at Vin Stone, on the Twitter thing. Type in Vin Stone to Google. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but I'm there hiding. I'm Jordan Spung, God Yumper of Mankind. You can find me... Not a show title. ...at on Twitter... I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want it to be a show title. I don't give a shit. Plus, Jordan Swung on Google Plus. Something pithy. And for me, Pedro, go close it off. For me, it will always be Jordan the Jemperer. <laughs> if you'd like to say how I'm wrong, find me on Google Plus as Plus Pedro Mateos or uh, on Twitter at Unaccounted4. I'm just rolling credits. Fuck that, man. I'm <laughs> yeah. Click. Show over! Peace out. Show ends now. <laughs> Play currently psychotic and possibly neurotic and a little bit erotic. The Adam family. Do 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 do. Helps you see weekly, baby. I thank all the beautiful party patrons who have made this possible. This experiment, it, it's a fun ride. Just getting started. Started? Man, can you I believe, can you believe it? Just, what the hell? <laughs> can you... Can you believe in two weeks this will be going on for 300 fucking episodes? I know, it's terrifying, isn't it? (laughs) We're coming up on six years. That's like half a decade. What the fuck? Jordan can't count. Um. (laughs) T-I-L. It's over half a decade. There we go. There we go. (laughs) There we go. It's like six years. That's almost half a decade. It's like, how how does it work in Canada again, man? Um, Well, those Canadian decades, man. (laughs) Seeing that Canadian IMAX movie really fucked you up, man. Listen. After 9 p.m., they shut the gravity off in Canada, <laughs> so time runs a little differently. I, please, please, please don't be, please don't discriminate against my frame of reference. It's all relative. Dinafire, ladies and gentlemen, we love you. Five dudes.